forecast for Aces Wild and the Storm Lost Legion, which should be pretty good. Uh, these are both great teams. They both have done a lot of great work, and I'm looking forward to see what they can bring to the table. We've got a few more things coming along the road. We have to get a few more things set up, so bear with us for just a moment. But thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting the MWO community, and thank you for uh, watching and hanging out with us. should be a lot of fun. Uh, but this is all for the championship 2021. It officially has come out yesterday. Um, we will have, be able to do a lot more matches tomorrow. Other than that, you'll be able to use call to arms to single people that you're ready for a fight, you're ready for some games. Uh, beyond that, we get to have these normal days to let people to queue up. It is an 8v8 format. You're limited only by tonnage from 300 tons to 480 tons. You're also limited by what types of mechs you can have. Three lights, three heavies, three assaults, so on and so forth. But indeed, it brings up some interesting situations where you see some more plans are focused on wolf packs. You see more plans are focused on having you know, just a generally great team overall. Um, and I think we're going to see a lot of that today from these teams, especially. You have no idea what you're going to get. All right, so we're moving into our next match. This should be pr our first match of the day. Ooh, boy. Should be amazing. Should be delicious. And then more importantly, I think we're going to have a great time watching these two teams get at it. Just try to pay attention because I'm going to go quick. I'm going to go fast. And I'm going to try to focus on these teams. So... Got questions, keep them coming. Otherwise, thanks for being here. I'm going to kind of talk about what the mechs builds have, what they're going to probably be going for, and see if we can analyze and try to figure out what their strats. Again, I think both teams are both definitely very capable of either doing range builds or brawl builds or maybe mixing the two up. So this is going to be the test or the... Uh, it's going to allow us the ability to see what we might see in these future matches. All I hope for is a close game. That's all I ever want. All right. So we're going to start off this team as they land right here. Go ahead and get all the settings pulled up as well. So for this side, we're actually seeing uh, Thor's Lost Legion bring out it looks to be a Summoner, a Hellbringer, a Firestarter, a Maghead, Death Strike, a Vapor Eagle, a Kodiak 3, Mist Lynx, and a Vulcan. So a very good standard build. I'm probably going to be seeing some great long-range weapons out of here. So we see four yard lasers out of the Hellbringer. We see a Doss, two Goss Rifle, and two large lasers from the... Uh, Death Strike, a medium, a small pulse is coming out of the fire star, very typical. We got three ER PPCs coming out of the summoner. Kong Lord, what did they bring in? Ooh, two Goss Rebels, two ER PPCs. Got some nice machine guns and probably medium pulse build coming out of the Vulcan. And let me guess, we got some PPCs coming out of this Vapor Eagle. Looks like it already. We already got some good matches, some good teammates, and some good mechs coming out of there. What are we waiting on? All right, looks like we're finally loading in. That was a very interesting wait time. Coming out of the Aces Wild team, we see a four ER PPCs with the Annihilator. We see the Warhammer of two ER PPCs, two Light Goss Rifts. Not Bob, already knew before I even clicked the mech. Four ER PPCs coming out of that one. We do see a Hellbringer of our own, four ER large lasers, a Vulcan, a Firestarter running the pulses, I would imagine. Eight small pulses there. Vulcan gonna run the five medium pulses. Look at that. Locust 1E, also an energy loadout, loadout, probably running some small P uh, pulse lasers themselves. Today's Paul lasers to set the trend. So we got range coming out of both. Light mechs being what they can be with their brawliness. We see the first shots coming out from, uh, let's see, that's that Fro, Frio 19 with a Vapor Eagle, trying to see if they can establish some fire lines. Looks Resort like there is a little bit of contest over Theta. Firestone and Vulcan very close. Mistlings looking for a flanks hit. See if they can actually get it. It does look like the Locust is going to have to disengage, especially with PPCs running in from the Summoner and the Vapor Eagle coming out of uh, <clears throat> Storm Lost Legion as well. Some good Vulcan fire. We do see Aces Wild being able to harass a little bit more as well with their Hellbringer coming out their shots. The Locust dropping down to 90%. The Vulcan 5T coming out of Aces Wild dropping to 86%. Some good shots. Our first consumable being used right now of UAV not to be followed quickly with our Tibby Strike. And we do notice that there are two caps being maintained by Aces Wild, so they are in a small point lead. Firestarter going down to 87. McGraw, what a tough shot actually coming out of that member. Let's see how anything get opened up into the damage scored actually. Believe it. More damage coming out. I think we saw a pop coming up for the Vulcan. Dropped down to 62%. The Vulcan is having to disengage, but still wants to make sure that they can keep the top. Locust is still pretty intermingled with the Mistlings. Looks like this is a bit of a trade warfare. As we mean, Katsupo is being used against a yeah, middle point. We're seeing a lot of our PPCs coming out of Aces Wild. Notice that the mechs that are severely damaged out of Aces Wild seems to be mostly the close mechs, the, Vo the Locust, the Vulcan itself and then the Hellbringer after it. So they're kind of winning the trade warfare while the Vapor Eagle is down to 80%. Looks like we might even have something that's open on that Vapor Eagle at this point. We have an 87% by the Firestarter and a 77% by the Vulcan. So both wolf packs took a fair amount of damage down to two PPCs and the right torsos open up on Furrow 19 with their Vapor Eagle. We do see some PPC shots coming out of the graveyard just right now, seeing as they're trying to maybe Make sure that Epsilon does not get taken by Aces Wild. The Hellbringer Summoner trying to put in what they can. A nasty airstrike eating a percentile of that Summoner right there. Maybe she's coming to Hellbringer. 
But using this distraction effectively, it looks like that TSLO managed to pull in and take Theta from them. So we're down to a one cap, soon to be two cap lead again, if they maintain Epsilon. And we have our first kill going out to the Locust 1E, one of the more damaged mechs out of the early engagements. Uh, Kodiak Labs, hopefully they did enough of work as the fire starter and mislinks were able to catch and take out the opponent. This death strike finally getting its left and right arm, and thankfully all of its weapons are in right left towards it, but we do see a brawl coming out of him. Three rolls go being picked off by the Black Laner and the Vulcan. Did I miss that Black Laner from earlier? That Black Laner must have gone super quick because I don't think I noticed that mech whatsoever, but it's being noticed right now as it's leading, helping the shots to the Fire Setter Ghost Seeker. Finally get some good hits on it. Actually, not Bob. It's kill stealing it from the enemy team. We do see shots coming out. Looks like Sea Wiz is getting hit pretty heavily. The Wolf Pack, the brawl that was engaged in, it finally get pulled out towards Death Strike. However, Legend of Kelda is being harassed on their own, being mixed around with the Mistlings and the Fire Starter going down to zero weapons on the Hellbring, which is why they left the mech alone, no longer needing to go for it. All right, the Marauder going to put shots still in the summoner. They're still trying to grab this Death Strike. If they can secure this kill, that's another heavy tonnage off the field. We got Texas Scrub going down. Looks like off in the back, the Life Mech's being picked off by Aces Wild. Black Lander going down second. Again, I believe that uh, Mech has not long for World, and there it goes. But we do see that Zul with Grenade was able to secure that one, but Seawiss is able to get another Mech coming in from the Vulcan that was there. Way to pull your tonnage, Mech Warrior. Ghost Seeker now looking that great as well. Actually powers down while the right leg is vulnerable and finally gets taken down. Your mongers trying to do their best, trying to lead their shots and put the damage out with two like Goss and two PPCs. They can still hit pretty hard, but it looks like the Wolf Pack was able to finish up the last mech being Legend of Kelda, who remember had no weapons to speak of. Your mongers being chased out, not Bob, being, and Zul being the last people alive. But they are matched up, ready to go. Oh yeah, enjoy it, love it. We have the Mad Cat Annihilator. Annihilator having most armor on it is trying to do what it can to take out the other mech. However, the Summoner or the Mistlings, the Wolf Pack is coming in. Nobob is taking their actual damage and hits. They're down to one PPC. There goes the core mech and not to be, no, not to be disappointed. Not to join their brethren wherever they may go after a mech warrior loses their mech. Probably to the nearest bar to shrink away their sores. There we go. First match going to <clears throat> Thor's Lost Legion. All right, uh, Storm's Lost Legion. Excuse me. I don't know why I want to say Thor. Maybe because I just think you guys are all Vikings at heart. Who knows? We can go with whatever. It's it's space magic. We can go with quite a bit. Let's take a quick performance. We do see a hefty damage coming in. 736 from Kong Lord. Bringing some good damage. Now, good uh, good damage all around for most of the team, actually. Very good. And then we have 629 coming from Not Bob doing their best with that Marauder. And looks like we had some good scrapping all around. Again, some of the... Some of the things when taking some of the mechs is that they can't do that much damage in the very beginning. You're going to have to go a little bit quick. You're going to have to uh, move faster if your mechs. So therefore, you won't be able to get a lot of damage. So don't feel bad for that locust not being able to grab it. They did their best in the situation. So what we have to do next is we've got the swap teams. We'll go ahead and let's reveal the cast folder so we can make sure that we know what match is coming up, which is indeed drop two coming out of the bracket. Aces Wild not claiming the first one. Instead, again, Storm Lost Legion coming in hot with their first win. Good fight all around. And I told you. Storm Lost Legion has been practicing. They've been having some really good aim shots. So we're going to have to see how far this goes next. Next map we're going to be looking at is indeed going to be Tourmaline Desert. So let's go ahead and swap to the map. There we go. So yeah, Tourmaline Desert. Gotta love it. So we are playing with the old maps right now. Or I shouldn't say old maps. So these are the 2021 maps that we'll be using the top 30s and on. Uh, however, people who are playing for the top 500 or people who are playing recently will have to be playing on last year's matches. We learned that recently. Uh, maybe a little change. Maybe they won't. But we're just going to keep going as long as we can. So for this one, we'll probably see the teams branch out of there, trying to get across the field as quick as they can. Uh, they might go ahead and secure the Sigma, they might go ahead and secure Gamma, but I'm assuming both these teams are sending what they've shown. We either take some positions over in the Echo 7 here to sink by, or they'll go in and take G6 in order to establish some fire allies come out of this team in order to kind of secure this entire area. Same thing goes for the blue team. The blue team can easily take this wrap in order to, fire, to provide fire lines this entire way, keeping at pretty much everyone at distance, especially this Echo 4 location you see right here. That's a prime position to hold and try to keep enemies at a bay. We definitely saw both of these teams able to bring the range fight. Now the question is, will they follow through with that? Will we see that be the victor again? Or are we gonna see a good old brawl at our feet? Only time will tell. But well, we saw some good max already. We see a lot of the typical max you would see as well. All right. We launch it, man. We go it. So again, Storm Lost Legion has secured one win. Can they secure more? Find out in just a moment. Right after these messages. There's no messages. I was, I was lying. Uh, that was a full face lie. 
Uh, support your community. Support your uh, streamers. Support your MWO community especially. Because without you, it wouldn't be a community. So if you haven't joined the Discord for MW comps, you should do that soon so you can get an idea of what's happening with the competitive matches. If you're not in the comp scene, you're not sure if you're going to participate, find a team. Get get involved. Because all that's going to happen is that you're going to have a great time and you're going to earn some MCs and C-bills. That's all you got to do. You just got to play. Find seven people. You might like them. You might not like them. If I had more room in my team, I'd invite you in. But all my slots are filled. So we move into Stormline Desert once again. We only have one win brought to you by Storm Lost Legion. Uh, Ace as well still needs to get their second win, but I believe they could do it. You know why? Because it's Ace as well. Like I said, they always got a card up their sleeve. You just got to be aware of it. Oh, it's Storm Lost Legion. I mean, who knows? They've been lost. No one knows where they're coming from. So they might have the element surprise with that line of logic. I, I don't know. I, I don't know all the backstory. I should probably learn the backstory. If you guys got backstory for these teams, even if it's made up, let me hear it. I would love to see what you guys have in store. Touch it like you know it. Great uh, chatter banner, you know, their banter. They're letting each other know that, you know, their mechs are oiled up and ready to go. Gotta love it. Got a lot of good looks coming in from Not Bob, being the team leader of Ace Squad, being such a sweetheart. Oh my gosh, everybody. Brother Man's Kong Lord. All right, here we go. So we got the mechs coming out. Uh, so for again, for Thor's Lost Legion, we're seeing ourselves come out of a fire starter, Vulcan, Jenner, Linebacker, Vapor Eagle, Warhawk, Executioner, and a Summoner. So we are going to see a little more of a range drop with the Warhawk probably bringing PPCs, Summoner bringing PPCs, Vapor Eagle bringing PPCs. The Linebacker and the Executioner, though, are the ones I want to know about. Those are the ones I'm curious about. Three AR PPCs coming in from the Summoner, indeed. Executioner, also three AR PPCs. I guess they absolutely can run all the PPCs known to, to the world. They have done it so well this so far. What's a little bit further, am I right? All right, so the Vulcans are probably going to run into, uh, Vapor, uh, excuse me, Medium Pulse Lasers, Linebacker, running, ooh, 60 AR Medium 2, heavy going for the hit and run tactic. Let's scurry all the way over here to see it's this wild team. It's wild, we got an Orion, ooh, an Onion. We also got ourselves a Wolfhound 2. We got ourselves a Dervish, a Linebacker, a Black Lane, our Gargoyle, a Vulcan. In another right, but the 2C variant, so they can bring it out. I'm seeing a lot of like brawly type mechs and a little bit of quickness in those mechs. Six mini pulses coming from that linebacker, six mini pulses coming from the dervish, six uh, small clan small pulses coming in from the uh, gargoyle. Not to be defeated, Orion 2C running one LBX 24 SRM 6s. We already see some shots coming out as they were able to quickly take Theta. We don't see a lot of movement going for either the Sigma flag from either team. However, Gamma is looking to be secured by TSLO. You see a little bit of pushing. It looks like Aces was wanting to recreate what they did for um, against uh, Highlander Dragons, where they actually just sent the team and pushed it as far as they could. See if they can actually get into range, get into the fight. There we go. Let's see. We do see them pushing exactly the same way they did against Highlander Dragons. This is a good move because what it does is it does indeed block a lot of the shots. So what they're hoping is to get closer and closer using what cover they can, sending the light max in order to kind of someone alert them, but someone keep aware. We got a nice maybe artillery strike coming out of here. As this team, oh, airstrike, didn't get a single hit, but it let them know. We do see the in the behind the scenes, we do have the fire starter and the Jenner actually trying to see if they can move behind and move quick, get some good info, maybe just go for the cap game. Because again, this map is big enough for 60 yard medium. So it looks like the Wolf and Black Lantern make sure that their heavier force does not get sniped. And the push goes on and on as they are moving as close as they can. I think a decent airstrike bringing the Vulcan 5T down just a little bit. Ooh, we have Zul the Burden taking the brunt of the shots, actually putting out a little damage of their own, possibly, with the. Center court almost gone. A nice zoning strike coming out. A UAV coming up from the friendly team. A UAV coming from the enemy team. Question is, who's friendly? Who's enemy? I don't know. I don't see anybody rooting for anybody right now. As we get into the thick of the fight, Zul the Burninator pushing as far as again, trying to close that distance. And that's their goal. They may go down, but if they can get in the mix of it, make them fearful for this attack, that will be all that's needed. So we do lose a 55 tonner, if I remember clicking for the dirt. But will they be able to take the Warhawk? Yes, they will. More tonnage than that as the push continues. Now, Legend of Kilda again, taking some good hits. Now, I do see a good maneuver coming in from uh, the store <clears throat> Storm Lost Legion as they actually split their units a little bit more, trying to take advantage of this open ground. Resort so it's not just this team hour. pushing into their enemies or their whole unit. They're trying to separate them, so it's more damage and more pressure. A brilliant move and a great strategy. Summoner from Royal Star going down, but unfortunately, not before the Gargoyle finally gets taken down. Will the Summoner lose enough? It loses a PPC, but not enough for the ERs or the two ERs still going in. Executioner cored out. Three ER PPCs trying to do value. Trying to get out of the height. Excellent movement from Conlord actually taking the high ground, denying that a Grawl pushes. They're left to decide, well, where else do I go? And as they have the entire team actually set up in a fire position still, 
Now it's even just support. We do have the Wolfpack's getting a self-destruction coming for Rollstar. That was the summoner. We did see the fire starter getting eaten up. Looks like the Wolfpack is actually doing well against Macaron and Michael as they're having to be forced on who they actually want to focus. The Vulcan actually losing a fair amount of its armor as well. That right and left torso, they're hoping to grab it and self-destruction coming out of Michael. Too hot to fight. UAV coming from the ground trying to let the team know. But again, this team went for Kong Lord, managed to finally take out that mech as they are moving their way, trying to get closer. It looks like there was a call made to help with the wolf pack. Because right now, even though they are in a small lead, thanks to the two cap lead, if this wolf pack survives this encounter, Aces Wild can still claim it. As they finally do take Kodiak, uh, Kodiak Abs. McGraw finally to be taken up by the Black Lantern. Black Lantern being relatively fresh, and all things considered, with a Jenner still left alive and a linebacker still left. That is enough movement. Linebacker and a Vulcan coming in from the Aces Wild. This is a 3v3 match with the lowest percentile being Yomunger. Linebacker dropped down to 58%, but not before Nob Bob destroys Fritzor. Nob Bob wants that shot. Nob Bob is going in with their Vulcan. His favorite eagle does not want this close range fight. And again, it's down to one PPC at this point. This Black Lantern with a little more armor should be able to take it. Looks like they are trying to focus down for... No, they're just going for that torso. Trying to rip up the torso because they know if once they take out both torsos, that mech is gone. Uh, Texas Grub Lord Jed and her 2C making the wise decision, realizing that right now what's going to win it is the cap lead because these three mechs are indeed too healthy enough for this not to work out. Or for this to, like, if he engages on there, or they engage on this, this is going to be a tough fight. Linebacker's pretty fresh, like, it doesn't, or in the fresh in the sense, it has nothing cored out. The Vulcan, left leg is a little beat up, its left arm pretty beat up, it doesn't need that left arm. The Black Lantern, a quick mech, the quickest of the, all of the three of them, is actually going to be do just fine. Now, this Jenner, though, not to be disappointed, is putting out a little bit of shots on it, knowing it has the range, trying to go for the cap, like I said, is going to secure the two cap. Now, there's a lot of things that they could do. In a 1v1 fashion, depending on the skill of this pilot, it might be able to defeat one mech. If they pair up, it's going to be a tough engage. It's going to be a tough fight to have. Now, what they could do, and I see that Aces Watts actually just kind of committing to this, they could go to all the caps to just secure it, but it looks like they want to take advantage of this kill. Right now, it's just one cap versus one cap. They have a lot of time to play with, so now going for this kill is probably going to be more advantageous. Unfortunately, the leg finally going out, and the other leg, not Bob. Now Bob stole a lot of kills today. He stole a lot of kills. Kappa is under enemy control. Y'all are doing fantastic. Good to see you, Shades Dark Flame. And yes, McGrawl, that pilot, McGrawl is an amazing pilot. I'm glad you understand and maybe relate on a very emotional and close level. We're gonna see more excitement about this. So this is what we want to see. Aces Wild taking a win back, which means that now both teams are tied for this scrim match. We have more maps to play. We've got three in total, and we're gonna see a lot more mechs explode. We got to see what I was talking about was Aces Wild's Brawl Push. They have some of the best Brawl Pushes I've seen, given I've only casted a handful of matches, but still one of the best Brawl Patches I've seen. I love to see them actually pull it into use, because again, you could imagine those comms going back and forth, and it's lovely. Uh, so we've got 646 coming out, 4A, 4F, 5441, what a player. And we do see the most damage coming out of Frio 19 and the Vapor Eagle, excuse me, for the Black Laner coming out for a 4A, 4F, 5, 4, 4, 1. I can say that five times less. Both teams putting an impressive amount of damage, and both teams having a good strat. Just seems like the push, the brawl, is just a tad bit stronger. All right, so coming out from this team, so the red team, in my opinion, especially since we're seeing a lot of range fights, so I'm going to kind of keep that in mind. The red team has the better line of sight when it comes from their spawn point right here. They can see more of Theta in the center area than the other side can, just because of the amount of structures there. Uh, to be on that side of the structures is a death trap, if you ever want to. Uh, but, because there's more line of sights, and most people are aware that to put yourself in a spot, the only way you can get out is down, and that's not even that reliable, you won't see a lot of teams fighting from up there. Now, there is still plenty of areas on the side. I should not have used that color, but it's okay. Maybe we'll see them that far. Um, plenty of areas on the side, including both the side castles. Apparently, people didn't know them as side castles. Well, there you go. Drop of knowledge. You're welcome. So they're called side castles because they look like turrets. They look like a fortification. They look like a castle. And why make things complicated? We could call it a mining factory or refinery or generators, but castle works the same. So anyways, boom, castle, boom, castle. And we have a lot of movement that can come out from all the teams. Now, again, this map is not that big. It's very easy to kind of get into a cap war, um, uh, or uh, not to get into a cap war, because again, you just want to see a fight and finish it out. Now, if the enemy wants to use jump jets and use range effectively, they'll kind of do what we saw a little bit in Desert, depending on which team does it, uh, but um, 
<clears throat> Lost Legion, the Storm Lost Legion, what they did was they kind of like bracketed around and allowed their teammates to keep firing while one might get pushed again. You can easily do that in this map, and with the verticality in this one, where you can actually put yourself out of position, kind of like Kong Lord did in Tormeline Desert, you can definitely get some really good shots, and even some easy shots, free shots, some would say, where you don't take any damage coming back. So we're probably going to see if one of these teams either needs to brawl, which we saw as well do it, and they did it effectively. Now they only won that way once, so maybe they'll try it again and see if they can win again. Or maybe we'll see that, um, you know, trying to keep things fresh, maybe we won't see a ranged game coming out of uh, Storm Lost Legion. Maybe they'll bring a brawl. We've seen them do the brawl before, and we could definitely see it do it again. But, and I know in quick play you usually see like an echo line or delta push. Maybe we'll see that. Maybe we'll see a little ramp coverage. The thing about the taking over the center area, Theta, I should say, is that it does kind of lead into kind of a death trap if you're not careful about it. Uh, because, like, you're right here in the center. You have shots coming in from all around you, whether it be the side castles or not, or from, like, again, some of the shots or the open areas, depending on what's available. And again, to put together mechs, and some of the mechs we're seeing, there's a lot of high uh, area spots so you can kind of flank, keep a line of sight. Like, the center spot is accessible from all sides. Kind of like the new HPG map, um, uh, where you can get to get snipers from all all angles. The only thing that's different in this one is that you kind of require jump chests to get into really good spots. So get into the match, it. Mining Collective, third one. Remember, this is 8v. I'm going to remind the rules every once in a while, so bear with me. It's an 8v8 format. You can use whatever mech you want. Uh, just remember that you can only have one of each mech in each drop. Uh, so, like, no two Vulcans, no five Annihilators, or anything like that. Uh, beyond that, you have a limit of class, uh, which is three, so three lights, three three mediums, three heavies, three assaults, so on and so forth. You can play around with it beyond that, which is kind of nice, but that's kind of the general shtick. So we're going to look over at this team's again, Mining Collective, what a beautiful map. There's been a lot of cool map changes. Would Mining Collective be a map that you guys wanted to change, that you would want to mess with, or do you feel like that it's great? It should stay where it's at. Probably won't see your answers until like five minutes, but I, you know, I'm kind of curious. All right, so we'll buy cool shots, best Nascari. Screech, screech! <laughs> God, these teams are fantastic. MW community is fantastic, is really what it comes down to. All right, so five cap map, data's in the center. Uh, Sigma, and Exma, uh, Sigma and Epsilon are gonna be available for team two. Kappa and Gamma are gonna be available for team one. It's gonna come down to what is the plan? Are we going for a range drop? Are we going for a brawl drop? Are we doing something interesting? Uh, so anyways, Belrion uh, coming out of Ace's Wall is bringing champion 3 in. I'm assuming we're going to see some brawl coming out of that. Linebacker, Victor, Wolfhound, Gargoyle, Vulcan, Black Lantern, and a Roughneck. Seeing some delicious stuff coming out of that team. Now, unfortunately, or not for unfortunately, so we got a team out of the team 2 coming from Storm Lost Legion. We're seeing a Summoner, Firestarter, Warmer 2C, an Irby, a Direwolf, a Nihilator, and a Vulcan, and a Commando. So again, I think, ooh, we are going to see some brawl. Some range. Ooh, Dire Wolf. That's a lot of DACA. Good job, Royal Star. Now later coming in. Two Gauss Rebel, six mini pulses. Good stuff. We do see that the team has moved in towards the Mater. We got three medium pulses, five ER smalls. We do see a Commando coming out as well. Commando. What is the Commando going to be bringing to the table? Probably some SRMs as well. Checking them out. We got two SRMs and a Flamer. Good for a Wolfhound Brawl. Mini pulses come out of the. <clears throat> dire wolf and five minion bolts come out of the vulcan so again kind of a quick boy jump jets again super important which is waiting for the nine dire wolf to get a position so they can actually put all that damage out uav is coming out from i think both teams at the same time they have reaction time we do see a small push coming out from the roughneck trying to put shots and seams into the fire starter now i'm assuming we're going to see another brawl jump coming out seven minion pulses coming for roughneck uh six small pulses ten micros coming in from the uh, gargoyle we do see a Okay, we do see six mini pulses coming out of the champion. One AC20 SRMs coming out from the victor. Good brawl focus drop as well. We do see the line burst, six mini pulses. The commando getting a thick of is trying to chase that gargoyle. Gargoyle Zul is going down to 60%. Or he's going to send towards it, but not before World Star actually takes out the victor. Remember, the World Star is running in that incredible. Uh, <clears throat> Dire Wolf actually with all the DACA on it with the Ultra AC 20 sets of heavy hitting shots. It's like this commando is actually getting into a, being a little bit of a squirrel and annoyance. They're putting a little bit of shots, but again, that's a lot of damage and tonnage that's set up right there. His line better caught out by the fire starter and by the Irby. Unfortunately, it does seem like this fight is going to go, unfortunately, for Ace as well. Fantastic for Storm Lost Legion as they're actually going to destroy bit by bit, taking out these mechs. Little damage going down, Vulcan dropping down to dead now, but that's mostly because of what's happening on the other side of the map with the wolf pack. It does look like that mech goes down. We do see three mechs surviving the onslaught from Issa's Wild. The wolf found two, the Vulcan, and the black laner. Good wolf pack, ready to go. Now, unfortunately for Issa's Wild, we do have some really strong pushes coming out of from Lost Legion. They have a lot of their healthy mechs. They did lose some of the torsos, looks like I lost a bit there. 
they could potentially win this fight. Right now, Aces Wild, just get a good shot. Aces Wild has a cap lead, right? Currently. They are currently trying to take three. They have two. But that means that eventually, we're going to have the Stormblast Leech is only going to have a one cap lead. Now, Stormblast Leech is doing a great job keeping them off of Theta, make sure they don't take advantage of it. They looks like they're trying to hook the Mexican in closer. They have a couple of these Mexican kind of take advantage. But that Annihilator being at 91% is going to be a tough nut to crack. Vulcan taking some unfortunate hits as you hear the call for the push just through the interwebs. And push they shall. Looks like they are trying to wrap around the Vulcan, making a daring escape. Love the moves. Looks like they're actually kind of looking towards the Firestar. Don't even think they were noticed by the majority of the team. Elsewhere, we do see the Commando is also trying to escape the McGrawl and the Irby as well as the Wolfhound. McGrawl actually getting taken down in that situation. Or excuse me, Kodiak Labs and McGrawl being the one that took him out. And followed up quickly by the Vulcan. Vulcan did their best, but once the alert was sent out, probably by Konglord, we were able to snap it or uh, take it away. So now we have a three cap lead with the last living mech coming from Jormungnir with the Black Lair. Now the Black Laner might be able to deal with these other light mechs okay. I mean that mech has lost its left torso armor. If it's just a 1v1 fight, definitely can take it. Konglord doesn't look fresh as well. Great shots coming out though. My goodness, actually taking the arm. Konglord showing that they have the skill to actually not only be a great caster, but a great shot as well. Can you believe it? Oh, this commando wanted the fight with the 1v1, but knowing that his teammates were there, this would probably be a disengaged. He is probably building on that Black Lantern. It has a little bit of heat to play around with, but with all those places being damaged and some of the heat sets that probably go along with it, not looking too great as they drop it down to 33%. Will they be able to take out this commando before today? No, Konglord not wanting to get away with that next torso, took it out. And it looks like this is going to go towards Stormblast Legion. Well done, as we're able to win the brawl, win the fight with heavy tonnage, kind of using a great positioning. Uh, Pelissera doing a little war crime team damage, and I thought, thought that Kongor was just having too much of a good time. Finally takes him out, maybe Ace as well paid for it. There goes your Ace up their sleeve as he managed to start grabbing him. Get his ass. All right, there we go. Camera's decided to go to Narnia. Enjoy. Maybe we're going to go see some Clanner inner space at some point, or inner sphere space. So we got great damage coming out from both teams. It does seem like Kongdor was able to bring a 608 damage to this fire starter. Oh, we everybody. And the Vulcan 5T with a Black Lantern and the Wolfhound doing the most of the can. Eh, followed up by the Roughneck. Doing about a 200 damage amongst the units as they tried to do their best to win the fight. Again, one part of the wolf pack, but it was not enough time to start dealing with him for the assaults and heavies to leave uh, Aces Wild corpses in order to move on to deal with the middle threat. Uh, Storm Lost Legion bringing some more tonnage than the enemy team. Uh, with a little more range to their drop as well. Kind of having a little bit of a brawl, but more range in general. And that's, I think, what won the fight for them. Well done. This will indeed be a new map. Or not a new map, the old map. We were playing on it. Uh, the updates have kind of changed up a little bit. We're hopefully going to see some of the maps later on down the road. But as right now, then we'll be playing on the old HPG. But I do enjoy new HPG. It does offer a lot of wall sniping. But personally, I, I know this is kind of going a little bit off topic, so now we're talking about that map more than anything else. So Team 1... If I'm imagining it and picturing correctly because the satellite dish is here, they have some really good swall sniping for Team 1 on the new HPG because they're actually able to get into D4 and actually secure this area quite easily and quite quickly. Something you can already technically do. Uh, let me use blue just in case. Something you can do in this map already, but there's actually a ramp that allows you to get into D4. But you can easily get a wall sniper using the cover right here and then have that as like an advantage point to shoot across the lines, uh, securing most of this. And we might see some wall snipers. There's been a lot of practice with it from this team. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so Team 1 for the new map has a lot of more wall sniping to get into with the ramps, and especially with this satellite dish ramp going towards them. But there's a lot of open air from here to the other side, while the red team, for their wall sniping, can actually see that cross pretty early on. So on the new map, we might need to see some different changes. We might actually see teams to kind of like either go straight from this door out, um, or we'll probably see them actually kind of just take the whole wall snipe advantage. Uh, but in the center, there's a lot of great spots to cover. I love it. So great. Now, again, from this map, we'll probably see something more of the same. I think at this point, uh, Stormblast Station has officially shown that they are able to do a mixed drop. They are able to do the range drop, and they're comfortable with the range drop, but they are able to do what, kind of like a second line fire support drop, where they have mechs shooting at 500 meters or 400 meters or so, using all those UX that we saw before. They're able to bring in the pain. Heavy Ghost Rebel definitely opens up a few mechs with all that DACA. Keeps you a little at bay. Let's just check the maps real quick. Looks like everyone is still working on. No worries. Uh, from the red team, uh, and then see who's playing red team. So red team will be Aces Wild. So Aces Wild, 
I've called it before, I'm gonna call it again because I've cast it for a couple of times. They might actually hold the F5 E6 wall. Hopefully we'll get started before that actually matters because they have a great formation where they hold that entire side, use their light mechs to secure the Gibby flags, the same thing which I'm sure Blue Team will do to a certain extent. Um, and then they'll push out and just hold that wall. Trying to get the enemy team to either go up top or put a position to sub some theta while securing these two drops, eventually sending lights to secure the gamma. That's the wrong one. Uh, but se secure gamma uh, from like their heavies and assaults. We'll see annihilators, we'll see victors, we'll see black widows uh, being a warhammer. We'll see a lot of good mechs that can actually do some docking, do some range. This is what I think. So um, now the question is will we see more of that as we get into this fight? Will they actually recreate that same drop for Ace as well, or will they change it up? Will they go for another brawl? It's like They've done a couple of times. Will they go back into the range drop? Again, all of us have had a lot of practice. At least some of us had a lot of practice with the new walls and new junctures on HBG. And I mentioned those because maybe those practices will still be put in. Now that you have a little more familiar with like how to be up there and what's good cover, maybe a lot of people who want to do it still want to make use of this old map. Good. And I actually would love to see it. I think both teams are very capable of doing so. The only thing I see that has been a death trap for most teams, I've only seen it work a couple of times, maybe for 2d20, <laughs> is that going into the basement and then pushing out. Now, um, because usually when you get into the basement, it's a death trap. You're in the basement and the enemy is aware of that, they have the info for it, they just secure the top and they, you, you have a harder time getting out of it. Uh, especially with this old map, it still can be quite the issue. Now I know Thor's Lost Legion, last time we faced it again, we're actually very excited about going into the basement and, you know, mucking it about. And they do a great job about staying in their bird ball. They don't lose their lance formation, which I think is one of their also stronger points, is they don't get easily flustered. I mean, we've seen it now in Tourmaline Desert, where they actually branch out, giving each other Overwatch fire. We saw the same thing in Mining Collective, where they kind of had a plan with their main force of their assault, their uh, uh, Dire Wolf, being able to just put out damage using their light medium mix to screen out. Don't know if I'm giving them too much credit, but I think it's deserved. I think they're putting in the time and they're putting the strats, and they definitely have the experience as of right now to keep going. But Ace as well is now warmed up. This is the part where it gets really exciting because now Stormlight Stage has got two wins. Ace as well has got one win, but they've played three matches together. They're both more and more familiar with each other's playstyles. Who's really good at shots? Who's really good at hits? Who do you got to watch out for? What kind of mechs do they typically lean on? Stormlight Legion has played a lot of the same mechs. So is Ace as well to a certain extent as well. Uh, but that's the question will they start being able to learn off each other? It's easier to solve a problem by far now. It's simply enough to play a defensive threat that negates their height advantage if your team's courting enough to stand to cover. Absolutely, Gemma. And I want to—I would love to go over more of HBG, but, you know, sometimes my commentary when I'm doing my normal streams is just me blowing up mechs, kind of chilling, hanging out, answering your questions. Whenever I get into casting, my energy peaks up just a bit more as we want to see. Like, I literally just get to spectate. I literally just get to have fun and watch these fights. I, I, and I've done this plenty of times before uh, to answer your real barbit, um, whether it be for Counter-Strike or other games like Valorant and stuff like that. I enjoy casting to a great deal. Um, oh wait, this is the new map. Oh snap, look at that, I just realized that. Hey, where's the dish? Yeah, I was gonna say. Wow, so we are actually playing on the new map. I wasn't expecting that. I thought for sure it was gonna be old map. All right, here we go. Well, this is gonna be very exciting for y'all. We're gonna go over everything as much as we can. But uh, what was I saying? Just so, oh yeah, I've done casting plenty of times before. Um, I've done it for um, Mech War Online since ISC of last year. Uh, just casually, mostly with the lower divisions because those are people who seem to enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, I am somewhat working with MW Leagues. We're kind of getting that all figured out still, but more importantly, I'm just a big promoter of the community to support as much as I can. Moving on, so let's look at uh, St Storm's Lost Legion. We got ourselves a Jenner, Firestarter, Vulcan, Assassin, Stalker, Linebacker, yeah, Mad Cat, Deathstrike. We've seen some great tonnage coming out, great mechs. Highlander, what? That's great. Highlander 4 ER PPC. Love to see. Um, oh, we got a hold. Okay, yeah, we got a hold. Um, well, I mean, the cap has already started. But yeah, we are now okay. It looks like we are going to allow the hold. Only you can make the tribe stronger. <laughs> Thanks for the sub. Appreciate it. Sup, bud. Sup, bud. Thank you for the sub. Thank you very much for joining the community as usual. Appreciate it. How do you guys make sure to full cap? Uh... Oh, okay, so yeah, we have a hold because we have a crash. Popper, animals. Hey. Hey. Oh my god, my dog is freaking out. He's feeling the crash right now. 
Anyway, so what we have before us, we should go over the mechs as well, is that we have the new map, we have a hold going up because we had a crash, we have to see the reconnect. They'll announce the time that we're actually going to be launching this, so we're going to have to wait and see when it's going to be. Uh, but we go over the mechs, we got PPCs coming out from a lot of these mechs for you, PPCs, two Gauss rifles, Stalker with the 6 AR large laser. I actually really like that build, I have that same build. Assassin, probably, you doing a little dance? Oh my goodness, Freyo, you got some moves. Uh, running the three SRM6s, we got the hit run linebacker coming out by Fritzor, we also got a Vulcan bring in the five medium pulses. We're hearing about your friend Lord Rogue yell stop in the background because she's trying to make sure that the pup stops cheering around like a madman. But you know, sometimes it's a part of life. You know, working from remote. Some of you guys can relate out there. Working remote, sometimes it happens. Uh, so we got a fire starter coming from Bellerin, eight medium pulse. We got the four ER PPCs coming from Marauder. So we have itself Fire Star, Locust, Annihilator, Mag Marauder, uh, Warhammer, Wolfhound 2, Mad Cat, and a Vulcan. So we're seeing a lot of the similar builds. Marauder coming back out from Zul. Um, drunk is best. Oh, this is getting a little bit on the time, but we'll have to figure it out. Niter five ER large lasers. We got two ER PPCs, two light gosses coming to Warhammer. Love that build. I want to try it. We're running the two regular goss rifles with four ER medium lasers, but maybe I need to try it a little bit more. Love the artwork. <laughs> nice artwork. <laughs> uh, Let's see, Kodiak. How do you see that? Kodiak BS? <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's pretty funny. We, we, we got it all figured out, everybody. That's what matters. So again, we're gonna, we'll look at the map while we have the time. Go at 12.10. All right, looks like we are about to start. We got the big old satellite dish, and this is what I was talking about. So from this team's side, they actually do have a pretty good spot for going up this ramp. Looks like the game has initiated 12.05, uh, being called by both the teams <laughs> to man up a chaw. So team two, Ace of Wild, has an easy ramp to get up here, while team one does not afford that ramp, so they can't take advantage of it. However, it does seem like the Storm Lost Legion is taking their quick mechs and actually securing their Theta flag instantly. Now remember, a basement is still a thing. It's directly towards the bottom. Here we go. Texan Scrub Lord taking it easily. We do see a load of equipment coming out of these other teams. Resource we see another double cap coming in, just going for the Gamma Kappa flag right here. Uh, we do see a uh, load of the wall sniping actually coming in for Storm Lost Legion. They're actually using the Highlander, the Mad Cat, and the Stalker, getting to the high ground with those ER Lords and the PPCs. They definitely do the work, but again, we did see a similar build coming out of Aces Wild. So we do see the Marauder, the Mad Cat, and it looks like the Javelin is moving up top. We do have the Warhammer, so we are going to see another ranged fight potentially come out. Both flags have been capped. It does look like the wolf pack that is being brought by Storm's Lost Legion is instead going indeed for their Epsilon flag as opposed to defending the Theta. And looks like almost if they're reading their minds or their comms. This is what's scouting out, trying to see if maybe they want to make a go for it. It looks like they are being kind of hesitant because they don't want to run into the entire team. Both these teams, because of all the cover, doesn't quite know what's board. happening. We do see a strike come out. Will it actually strike these mechs going down to 99%? Royal Star actually taking the brunt of that airstrike, but we do finally see the trading coming out. Looks like the Stalker, Mad Cat, and Highlander coming from Storm's Lost Legion is trading into the Annihilator and Warhammer coming from Aces Wild. We do see a little bit of the brawl fight. Again, no one's gone for the three uh, flag from Aces Wild. Instead, we see a three-cap lead coming out of Storm's Lost Legion. Well, the Wolf Pack has begun. The Quick Mechs have made it in. Aces Wild trying to actually see if they can get people in, but ooh, we already see some fire coming out. This is going to take Aces Wild to actually use their range mechs in order to stop these guys from being able to assist so heavily. Because right now, this is just a kill box for Storm Lost Legion. All they really need to do is keep, they have seven, six mechs at least, four mechs at least, but six maybe, fighting these three mechs as the Locust, again, is taking a lot of damage, finally losing its leg from that fight. It is pretty much dead like Texas Stub Lord. Uh, actually, Scrub Lord is able to get Ghost Seeker out of the fight, followed quickly by Cody Abs. Uh, unfortunately, Belleron, the Fire Sword is having to get out of it. These mechs are gonna be quick. They might be able to sustain this. We do see a load movement coming on the Vulcan, 4A, 4F, 5, 4, 4, 1, going for the Theta Flag, really, and that's what they're going to have to go for. Now, for the trade game, 85% by the Stalker, 86% by the Highlander, 92% by the Death Strike, nothing cored out yet. Now, let's check in. Warmonger, unfortunately, or uh, Yormonger, is going down to 71%, losing their left arm. They don't need it because the weapons are mounted on the left torso, but that left torso is red as well. And now they're trying to put that damage. You see Texan Scrub Lord is able to grab the last of the Wolf Pack from Aces Wild. So we're la well, it's almost the last of the Aces Wild Pack, as we still have a Vulcan that is able to secure caps for Aces Wild. They do have a... Oh, they actually gave up their second, the, the Theta Cap. Maybe fearing that the enemy team was coming in, they didn't want to go for the third cap. We'll have to see if it actually is going to go down. Man, Japan Glove, thank you for the raid. Hopefully, can someone give them some support. Thank you very much for watching and bringing people into it. We're on the third match, or excuse me, fourth match 
of this great, great fight between Aces Wallet and Storm Lost Legion. Aces Wallet is currently not doing so well on the mech front. A lot of their mechs are finally getting beaten down because due to trades or more importantly due to the wolf pack of Storm Lost Legion. Storm Lost Legion is moving back in. They were able to flip the Theta flag coming from Aces Wallet, but it looks Remember, like Aces Wallet is going to make the fight stronger. Ours. Thank you for the sub, Free Snows. I appreciate it very much. I do my best to keep you all entertained, and I appreciate the support. Uh, so, yeah, we do see the Theta flag being somewhat capped over. So, again, Tor Last Legion is doing a great job making sure that they stay in lead cap-wise so they don't lose it due to that. And with them being cap lead and mech win lead, and I think even the trade fight, so the Burnator being one of the freshest mechs besides, like, the... Uh, yeah, besides like the Vulcan being 95%, but one of the wall traders against, again, 60% by Royal Star. Kong Lord taking a little damage, not opened up completely. Royal Star, it's got a lot of good movement, a lot of good range on that Stalker, but it's the high beacon that you really got to minimize the damage on. But at the same time, it's, you know, someone's got to take this fight. Like for them to be doing so much damage against these team, it's kind of important. Unfortunately, 4A, 4F, 5, 4, 4, 1, I almost have that memorized, is actually doing a great job staying alive against a 1v4, about to be a 1v5 situation. Vulcan's legs getting shipped. It does seem like Storm Lost Legion dead indeed do their research and knows that legs are where you got to hit them. The Warhammer is in close, but the Warhammer with that much damage and that much potential around them, especially being cored out, not an ideal spot. Looks like the Annihilator trying to put out some support and help as well as it's picking up the, ooh, get a good close-up shot of that Vulcan. But unfortunately, the Warhammer also goes down. Looks like he's trying to put shots into the linebacker. The linebacker being that hit-and-run laser bomb, and it just needs to put a couple of good shots in the Annihilator. Wisely to working in some of the torso because they're able to take the side torso off as some of the weapons from this annihilator That set of torso is a lot to damage and a lot to destroy so right and left torsos besides legs are always the most ideal when it comes to annihilator There goes the torso therefore goes two large lasers as the legs are being focused off And even though we might see some good kills some last minute kills strike coming out against uh, Not Bob. I feel like this is so but surely gonna go towards storm lost legion as he might be able to claim this win. Not Bob taking into the fights as well. We already kind of know what's going to happen in the Nile later, so I'm going to check what's happening over here. Assassin doing what he can with the Jenner. Not Bob, though. Either because of the traits early on or just because of the amount of damage and output. Finally is getting beaten down to 29%. And with that, I didn't honestly, I didn't know if they could go lower. They were doing a great job sharing that. The Vinylator was indeed taken out, so it's going to come down to Zool the Burnator. Was the freshest, now being focused, makes it less fresh. And these light mechs still securing the cap while putting out the fire, dropping up 49%. And there it goes. Great, great positioning and great uh, staying flexible coming out of Storm Lost Legion. They didn't allow their mechs to get separated. They purposely were staying wolf packed and ready to go. Not, and kind of biting to the idea that they were always doing something. There was never a moment where they weren't actively looking for anything to come out of that. Let's take a notice real quick. So we do have coming out of... Uh, Storm Lost Legion, great damage. Again, Sea Wiz, Mad, Mad Cat, Mad Girl on the Firestarter, and the Highlander coming from Kong Lord. Woo, boy. But not to be disappointed, it looks like uh, <clears throat> Zolda Burnator for 501 damage for Aces Wild, followed quickly by a 4 and 11 damage with the Annihilator. Good damage all around, just not enough to carry it through. Those traders, those max doing a lot of good work with those ERO large lasers. Great play for the Stalker to be brought into the play, because again, that range can outdistance a lot of mechs out there. Being, tra tra uh, excuse me, uh, challenged by Light Goss and Maybe another ER large laser is one of the only effective ways, but again, with the damage output of firing a gauss shot uh, or firing ER large lasers, you would wonder if the gauss shots would win that trade, but looks like we had a fantastic fight with that one. So let's swap the teams, get ready for this next match, and let's get into the final one for the script tonight against Aces Wild versus Storm to Lost Legion. Thanks again, everybody. Thank you again for the raids. Thank you for the follows and subs. Y'all are amazing, and I hope you're enjoying what we're seeing.